boom, 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 boom. Hey, 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 everybody. So excited to have you all join us today for the grand reveal of the 2022 Catalyst Award winners. Woo, woo. I am Latanya Reese Smiles, also known as LT, founder of um, uh, a couple of things, but mostly <laughs> uh, with regard to First Gen and Juice and the Catalyst Awards. Um, and we are going to be celebrating popular culture. Joined today with some friends um, who have had a hand and a big part in this year's um, um, uh, award season. And I will uh, let them introduce themselves. We'll start with you, Heather Adams. Why, thank you, LT, Dr. LT. Hi, y'all. I'm Heather Adams. I'm the founder of Transfer Nation, about all things community college transfer. So if you are into community college transfer, come join us there. Um, I am a, a supporter and advocate and fan of all things first gen as well. And today, and today or this time around, I was a first time voter in the Catalyst Awards. So this is just a thrill of a lifetime. So I'm here to be the woohoo girl and to give lots of support. And occasionally, sometimes I do send LT some suggestions. I think she might be watching one right now, too, and yeah. cursing me for it. <laughs> yes, you know, I hate you right now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. And then I'll pass this to another. Well, you're a first time voter, um, Stephanie. Were you involved me? last year? Yeah. Yeah, I voted last year. Okay, there we go. I just, I just didn't let you vote this year. So. <laughs> you didn't let me vote this year, but I've still been watching all the shows and sending you lots of recommendations too. I love pop culture, um, and I especially love pop culture that has first-gen narratives, thanks to LT, who has ruined pop culture for me, but in the best way possible, because... Now, everything I watch, I'm looking for that first gen narrative. I'm looking for that representation. And I'm always listening to see if they actually even drop the word first gen. Um, so I'm excited to be here and talk about like some of my favorite shows and um, other popular media of the last year. Steph, when you're not watching pop culture, what do you, what's your day job? My day job is over at the University of Southern California. I'm an assistant director of campus activities over there. And I also do spend a little time on the side working on my dissertation, um, which should be done by the end of this year so that I can join all the other doctoras in the in the Zoom room. Um, although I won't be making anyone call me doctor because I'm not ready for that yet. But <laughs> that's a different conversation. I, I shall call you doctor. Great. Thank you. Uh, speaking of doctor, let's introduce, let's welcome Dr. Eve. Hello, and I shall call you doctor too. Um, but as you see, it's, you know, Evangeline D. Blakeney, but I go by Dr. Eve to make life easy for everybody. Um, I am the creative of a, few, of a few first gen things, the first gen lounge, the first gen shop and first generation university. So all things first gen, a very proud HBCU graduate, in fact, of the first HBCU in the South. Um, and I am the 2021 Callis Award winner for the best podcast. So extremely excited to be here today um, to continue to, you know, spread and show love for all things first gen. Yes, yes. Our inaugural winner, in fact, for best podcast. Love it. All right. Uh, you will be joined by a, another longtime voter, Kelly O'Neill. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kelly O'Neill. I am at Texas A&M. Um, very, very happy to be here with you all. I'm first gen. I'm a transfer student um, working hard on my PhD as well. Coursework over. Now it's time to just get into the writing. Um, so I will be there with you all soon and really excited to talk about a movie that we'll all hear about in just a second. Yes. Also, I'm loving the transfer representation in the group today. Great, great. And then Karina Valdez. Yes. Hey, everyone. Super excited to be here with y'all. Um, Karina Valdez, first gen, proud, double Bruin. Um, I'm not working on anything right now which i love i'm just existing and thriving and living in joy as a first gen professional um that's all i can do at the moment that's where i'm at um but i'm super excited to be here in particular um thinking about the book nominations i'm a big reader so um i really enjoyed working through those so super excited to chat with y'all 
Karina, as usual, way too modest um, and appreciate your background and interest in, in libraries and love that you bring that um, to it. Last but not least, we have Dr. Cynthia Alvarez. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Cynthia Alvarez for Center. Uh, have been loving and working in this community for a long time with LT and Heather and so many of you. I'm excited to be here. So, yay for the Catalyst Awards. Yay. Well, before we dive in um, announcing the, the first category, let me just share a little bit about um, the background of the Catalyst Awards. And that is um, the fact that um, we want, we want to achieve two primary goals. One is uh, celebrate complex storytelling about the first generation college experience, even if it's not saying explicitly first gen in that narrative. There are going to be some components of it that are very familiar um, to the first gen experience and overall increase the visibility of the first gen identity within popular culture um, and mass media. And we're talking about in podcasts, TV shows, films. In fact, uh, First Gen and Juice even has a, a whole playlist about <laughs> uh, first gen, uh, with the first gen narrative. So we are going to kick it off um, by announcing the first um, the first category here. Just bear with me as I pull it up. And uh, I'm going to announce, I'm going to say who the nominees are and Cynthia is going to announce the winner. All right, so for best film, of the about the first gen experience for 2022 the nominees are uma wedding season spider-man no way home dawn and father of the bride drum roll please as cynthia tells us who won the winner of this year's catalyst award is spider-man no way home claps all around yes uh, this was an amazing movie such a great uh first inspiration for first geners out there we know the quote with great power comes great responsibility and that's something that us as first geners holds true to our hearts as we're moving forward in this unknown world but going back to the movie it was such a great story of resilience of overcoming uh these uh, pressures and responsibilities that you feel um i know that it's been a favorite for all of us that we see Peter Parker uh, being that first gen student going to college or about to go to college. Uh, and that's just a, a really wonderful story to see on screen, especially with the name of Marvel, with Disney in the back of it. Um, it's, it's a really great way to highlight what it's like to enter a space or to be about to enter a space that is a little bit in the unknown. And so uh, yay for Spider-Man No Way Home for everyone who's worked on it. And if you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch it. It's a good one. Thank you, Cynthia. And let me see if anyone else has a comment about that movie or the category at all. I mostly just wanted to share for those listening. This was a really hard category because there were so many tremendous films. But what was tremendous about it was the variety of genres. We had first-gen themes in a thriller. We yeah. had first-gen themes in a Indian musical. We had first-gen themes in romantic comedies and an Indian romantic comedy. First-gen from all over the world, a Marvel movie. I mean, it was just such a thrill. I had a real hard time with all of these. So if you have the time, you should probably just watch all of them. They're all really good. <laughs> They, they really are. And I'll, I'll just add one more thing, because I think what was particularly resonant in that film, this is when people were tweeting and texting me about it, is that moment between Peter and Dr. Strange, right, where Peter and his friends have not gotten into college, right, they're rejected. And like Peter wants to manipulate time, go back in time to change everything. And Dr. Strange is like, wait, why don't you just call, right? <laughs> And so for many of us, especially when you're first gen, talk about hidden curriculum, Peter was like, you can do that, you know? So that really, I think that really resonated with people, right? That particular moment there. So awesome, awesome. Great. Okay, well, let's now talk about, okay, we need a, like a drinking game for every time we say this is a tough category. They're, they're only, they're just, they're, they're really tough. But here's another one. Um, we are going to share now 
um, Best Fiction, and the nominees are Aftershock by George Wolfe, Required Reading for the Disenfranchised Freshman by Kristen Lee, If You Could See the Sun by Anne Liang, and then um, Lulu and Milagro Search for Clarity by Angela Velez, and uh, Karina is going to do us the honor of announcing the winner of this category. Yes, super excited to announce that the winner for this category is Lulu and Milagro Search for Clarity. I um I had so much fun reading this one. Um, I would love to share. I I read actually a lot of young adult fiction. That's one of my <laughs> genres that I really love. And I think a lot of times they're in some young adult fiction that to me, um, will feel like an adult writing the way they think like a young person talks or thinks or speaks, and it comes off very disingenuous. Um, but I did not feel that way in this novel. Um, the conversations between the sisters. Um, sounded like a lot of the conversations I had with my sisters when I was like, you know, a teenager thinking about what my next steps were. And it also reminded me a lot of the students I used to advise. Um, so it felt very genuine, like coming from a real place. Um, and what I also loved about it was the two main sisters um, get most of the story, of course. And we, we get two kind of like path to college experiences. One sister who's been on track all the time she's been perfect attendance grades everything always knew, knew this was the path she wanted and another sister who hasn't had that experience who's been disenfranchised from her um experiences has been considered like boy crazy and only cares about certain things that aren't school related um and she unravels kind of her path to what could be her future in college um by being exposed to like an art school and a different path and um, then we have an oldest sister who went and kind of had to like college and had her own challenges and found a different path. Um, so I felt like it was such great representation for all the different ways you can be first gen, all the different backgrounds you can come from and still kind of find your way to the what path works for you and feel really empowered by that. Um, and also there was, even though we talked about a lot of challenges and the stress of like leaving home and disappointing our families and the pressure, I felt like the book made so much space for all the joy and the pride and the excitement um, of discovering these parts of yourself and and moving through um, your passions and getting to explore those things. So that was ultimately why it was my choice for the winner. And I think a lot of folks resonated with that as well. That was so beautifully put, Karina, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, any anyone else want to comment on on uh, Lulu e Milagro or uh, any of the other nominees? Oh, so tough. Well, I, I love what um, like you like you mentioned showing even within one family like the variations and the differences. Cynthia, I'm actually going to pick on you a little bit because I I mean you have a twin and so and you and I have talked a lot about what that can feel like right where you're in the same family and your paths are, are kind of different would you mind just sharing a little bit about that yeah you know it's it's a unique experience that not a lot of people get to have um it's it's interesting in many ways I think for me what's been what's been something that is just so um incredible to recognize is that even with the same upbringing and the same um, values instilled in us, we wound up in such different places. And I did a lot of reflection and just, you know, thinking about how that came about. And um, it's part of the reason why I went into education and my PhD is in education because I just kept thinking there's something within the structure and within the institution that has led to such differences. But even then, my parents, my family members, really under, uh, really, really placed a lot of faith in the education system. And, in, and if the education system said, well, one of them is really smart and the other one is just average, then they believed it. And so then that adds on to the pressures, to the expectations that arise and, um, it's very unhealthy. And so that's my that's one of my most giant bones to pick with the institution <laughs> because it it um, the dynamics of that happen within a family can be so um, influenced by the structures that are around us. And again, with being twins, with being exactly raised pretty much exactly the same, we see absolutely different outcomes. So yeah. Thanks for letting me tell that story. 
thank you for sharing. I think it's really important. And I know I know you have to take off in a minute. So um, thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. Um, we have another book category, but we're going to move from fiction to nonfiction and memoir specifically. Um, and uh, happy to share with you now those nominees. They are The Chosen One by Echo Brown, Finding Me by Viola Davis, Harvesting Dreams by Erica Alfaro, and Ma uh, Made in China by Anna Q, and then finally We Were Dreamers by uh, uh, Simu Lu. Dr. Eve, will you do us the honor, please? Absolutely. Um, congratulations to Viola Davis for her memoir, Finding Me, an incredible piece. Um, definitely something that I had to even go to my social media and said, if y'all ain't read this, y'all need to go read this. Um, I actually had one of my sisters to send me the book. I'm not typically someone who reaches for memoirs, to just be very honest. And I could not put the book down so much so that I went to buy the audio book and boy, did they get me because Viola knows she performs. She's one of those characters who you would never have guessed because of how she sews up in so much grace and elegance. But you can also tell now in her characters that she can feel the pain that she exudes on the screen because of what she's been through. Um, from poverty to promise is probably what I would think about with this from abuse in the family to having dysfunction in the family to, you know, family passing away and becoming the one who actually makes it and everybody's depending on you to figure it out to being someone who's experienced, you know, trauma internally, um, having a hysterectomy, not being able to have kids and how do you find love? And I mean, thinking about the beauty and being black and navigating as a first gen and what culture looks like and choosing the institution that you go to and how you go off and navigate the world when you have little to no resources and having to make those decisions to walk miles to work. And if you can even make it to your other job for work because you're just trying to make it. So what it means to be alone in this world and to try to run from who you've been because something's better waiting for you. But in fact, we can only face ourselves and we'll always be who we are in this world. So even as first gens to embrace and accept the identities that we have, but to know that we are powerful and that we are enough and that we can live abundant lives and still go on to do amazing things in spite of how little, I mean, this woman used to sleep in her peaceful clothes and yet she's one of the most powerful actresses that we've ever seen on the screen and has done so in a way that you feel Viola. So what a gem. Um, I think especially as Black women first-gen professionals, I think it's a required read. <laughs> Everybody needs to get to this book. And I say that because I think a lot of times we miss the Blackness in the first-gen conversation. That's just my pers my perspective. And I love to see this woman who I just had no idea, um, who was also a TRIO graduate, right? And what do you think about how that program impacted her journey and her experiences to get her to where she is, to where I see myself, you know, beyond Oprah, beyond Michelle Obama, this regular chick from around the way who was like, I'm going to make it. And she made it. And I identified with that um, and found a place of healing for myself through this book that I didn't even know that I needed. So truly transformational, um, one of a kind, go buy it, Amazon and Audible, get all of it. <laughs> Did Dr. Buy it right something now. to make us cry? <laughs> I don't, <laughs> all the feelings. I'm ordering it right now. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just add that she actually does not back away from the first gen um, identity, right? Sometimes you can have a narrative that's about struggle and overcoming, but she talks about what it means to be the first in her family and have her little sister and her mother show up at her dorm and what that means and how that followed her through a, um, her professional career. I thought, it, I just thought it was fantastic. They were, they were all so good, but yes. Uh, hers was special for sure. All right. Thank you, Dr. Eve. We're going to move on. Whew, we're moving on to TV shows now. And uh, I am happy to um, share the nominees. And they are, and, and look, th this has changed every year. Sometimes it's reality TV shows. This year, we couldn't separate them by that type of genre. We had to separate from drama from comedy <laughs> um, so if you see some things in the past know that you know we have to keep uh, evolving with it How, all right gosh this was so tough so um the nominees are power book two ghost um, which is on stars partner track which is a netflix original and 
Cheer, um, which I believe has been a previous nominee and is also on Netflix. Uh, Kelly, who won, man? Thank you, thank you. And uh, all three of these amazing watches, all three are amazing. But this year's winner is Partner Track. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about Partner Track is you see and you understand as a first gen student, you graduate, you step into the professional world, you're a first gen professional. So you're stepping into another world that you don't have the playbook for, and you're just doing what you can um, to find what's right. You're Every day you're put into a new situation and you're trying to figure out what's the right thing to do in this situation. Uh, in partner track, you're looking for people who look like you and hoping that those people will guide you. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. You'll have to check the, the show out to find out what happens with, with the main character and partner track. Um, one of the things that I also thought about is with first gen, first gen immigrants, uh, the first gen to be U.S. citizens, the first gen to be raised in this country, our parents are always thinking doctor, lawyer, engineer. So you're going and you're going hard, but you you get there and then you find out, wow, this is a whole nother world. And as a first-gen student, I'm stepping into something that's not familiar to me. How do I navigate this? Who Who is on my team now? I found my team at, in college. Who are the people who are going to be on my team now? Uh, but it's a, a wonderful, wonderful television show. I encourage you all. Uh, spring break is coming up in another month. Take a day watch it <laughs> thank you for that I'm, I'm sure there are other comments i i just um uh oh totally lost my train of thought there was some oh oh i know one thing i was going to say quickly was that of all the categories that one got the most votes um for for whatever reason so very interesting any other quick comments though about this category cheer Ghost Power Book and uh, uh, Power Book Two and and uh, Partner Track, all amazing. Yeah, I'll just echo what Heather said earlier. Just so much diversity in the types of stories being told and who they're highlighting in the genres, and it's just cool to see that we're not getting like the Oliver Twist narrative again and again, but we're getting something different where. Being first gen, I mean, sometimes it's at the forefront of the characters um, and it really informs the main narrative. And sometimes it's just part of who they are and it pops up, you know, as things come up throughout, you know, throughout a season of the show. And I think it's amazing to be able to see first gen characters kind of portrayed in all these different ways um, and that they're not all the same. It's not kind of like this one single narrative that's being put forward. And can I also say a quick thing about Cheer? One of the things that resonated with me is they're all athletes. And for many of them, they've been cheering since they can remember being alive. And you're going to get to a point where I'm not going to cheer anymore. And I know I can cheer. I did graduate, but do I know that I can do this other job that I'm about to step into? And that's a lot harder than a lot of people think. And then really quickly to Ghost Power Book 2, um, the narrative of a young Black man coming from wealth. So money wasn't the problem because we so often hear about, you know, the, the struggle, which again, we talked about the Viola Davis piece, right? But this was told opposite but even money couldn't fix his problems because of the first gen experience just being what it is. And then, you know, we, how many first gen characters are actually 
in here, even from Zeke, the star basketball player. Um, and, and there's so many first gen characters who don't even know, but again, they're wrapped up in money and they want to throw money at stuff. And it's like, but baby, money don't work here. I mean, it works here and it's great because it's got you in this, this best school that you can go to. Um, but even to be still treated as a black man from the hood, right? Who's not even so, um, is extremely intelligent and capable and even the perceptions of what you think about when you think first gen. Cause I mean, it's not always a struggle story. And that's something I believe Stephanie, we've talked about before. We need to see more positive narratives of, yes, I came from a great background, a great family. Granted, I, you know, that gets a subjective here for ghost, but you know, just thinking about the fact that their money exists and not everybody's coming from the struggle who's first gen, but it doesn't mean that the challenges, um, make the experience any, any less for that person. We're not all Oliver Twist. <laughs> awesome. Yes, love it. Okay, we're just going to go to an even tougher category. So let's just get right into it, which is uh, Best TV Show Comedy. And there were only three nominees for this one. I know, y'all. I know. Um, the Bear, which won a Golden Globe Award, by the way. Um, Abbott Elementary, also Golden Globe winner. And Reservation Dogs. So, Steph, take it away. Who won, babe? You're, you're on mute. There we go. I knew that was going to happen. For suspense. Suspense purposes. Yes. I, there you go. Um, first, I just want to say these nominees are so good, and this category is so tough. LT has been bugging me to watch The Bear for months. It is on my list. I'm just trying to mentally and emotionally prepare myself for it. Obviously, everyone loves Quinta. Quinta is everyone's celebrity best friend, and... The winner is my personal favorite, Reservation Dogs. I love this show. The first time I watched it, I knew it was like nothing else I'd ever seen before. I fell in love right away with these four main characters, these four indigenous teens, Cheese, Alora, Bear, and my personal queen, Willie Jack, um, who dream of saving enough money to make it to California, but are also dealing with the loss of their kind of fifth member of their friend group, Daniel. And how to like move on from that without forgetting him um, and a lot of guilt around that. It touches on these familiar themes of growing up, um, that push and pull that you feel about your home, um, this desire to belong somewhere without losing who you are and without, you know, fully conforming. Um, and it is so unique in the stories it tells, the sense of humor I just laugh and laugh and laugh when I watch this show. I have never seen anything like it. And I can't recall any other show that really dedicates so much time to telling the stories of Native youth, let alone with the care and the nuance and the hilarity that this one does, probably because I think literally everyone involved in this show, from the actors to the writers to the executive producer, um, Taika Waititi, is Indigenous. And this is another one that avoids the Oliver Twist narrative. I think it brings a lot of um, humanity to these four central characters um, in a way that doesn't ask them to be, you know, perfect or the saviors, which is something I really like. Because I think a lot of times the first gen narrative is this is the golden child and they always make it to like Harvard. I don't know why it's always Harvard, but it is. And <laughs> and. You know, there's other there's other pathways um, and no one is really as perfect as that portrayal anyway. And so I love that it shows them, you know, in their ups and downs, in their struggles and really shows that what gets them through it is their community and their friendship, um, which in a lot of other shows, first gen characters are forced to forego in order to be successful. And this is one that's like no, the friendship is it. And that's never going anywhere. Um, we get appearances from so many community members. White Jesus comes through at some point. We have Oklahoma, California is got it all. But it is truly one of the shows where I have not laughed and cried so much watching anything. I absolutely love this show so much. Congratulations to Reservation Dogs. Uh, I really I'm glad we recorded this because I really hope you write 
it just a little if just a little bit of what you said was so important and i'll just say very 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 quickly um this show also gives a good indication of why native and indigenous youth are so underrepresented in higher ed uh, all right last but not least um another really tough category and that is best podcast it's just the second year we've offered it the nominees were latinx greek life college and career coffee chats for the generation um, and writing on my mind. And I'm, I will go ahead and announce this winner here. Super special. I think we can all agree. Um, shout out to For the Generation um, from Loyola Marymount University. And I'll say this about this podcast. This is the only podcast that is completely run by students students produce it they come up with the content they are the talent on it as well um, and we've never had a student run podcast nominated before so um, just delighted i believe two of them are sophomores and one of them is a junior and um, this institution created a work study position for them to um, to have to have this opportunity. So it just says a lot about the future of first gen stories and storytelling and narratives and craft making and, and all of that. So um, shout out to them. We don't have a lot of time left, y'all, but um, I just wanted to thank you all for being here and for speaking on all of these different um, um, storytellers. And we look forward, yes, the babies, we, we look forward to 2023. Please, already people are sending me uh, nominations. and It's only the end of January. But if you have any, please let me know and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good night, y'all. Thank Good night, you. Y Good night, everyone. Congratulations, all your winners. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <clears throat>